Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Estorino, CCIE number 24347. And in this video, uh, part two of our VLAN trunking protocol video series here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the configuration of the VLAN trunking protocol for a VTP server, transparent mode, and client mode here. Um, if you missed part one of this series, you might want to run back and uh, do a quick overview. In part one, we covered the theory of VTP and went over um, a bunch of various different things uh, regarding the VTP protocol. In this video, we're going to focus specifically on configuring it. So a pretty simple setup. On the left here, we've got Cat1, and that's going to be our VTP server where we're going to add three different VLANs here. CAT2 in the middle is going to be our VTP transparent mode switch and CAT3 on the right is going to be our VTP client. So what should happen here is we're going to go ahead and configure VTP. We're going to add our VLANs over on CAT1. They should be propagated over to CAT2. Since CAT2 is in transparent mode, it should not affect CAT2. CAT2 should not update its VLAN database but it should pass the information on to CAT3, the client, and CAT3 should update its VLAN database with the information we add from CAT1. So the first thing we're going to do is actually configure our trunks between all three of these switches. Now I said in the theory part of the video that if you're running uh, the dynamic trunking protocol, DTP, your VTP domain names must match. So we're going to see that in action here. Um, that's the first thing I'm going to show you. So let's configure the trunk here between cat1 and cat2. And then what we'll do is we'll set the VTP domain name differently so that we can see what the mismatch looks like. So let's jump over to cat1. Cat1. And what we'll do is we'll go into port 24. All these links are shut down right now, by the way. And I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation.1q switch port mode dynamic desirable. That way we set it to negotiate the trunk using DTP. Over on cat2, I'm going to say switch port trunk and cap.1q, switch port mode dynamic auto, and let's configure the link over to cat3. Switch port mode dynamic desirable, and on cat3, port 20. we're going to say switch port mode dynamic auto. Now what we'll do, let's go over to cat1 and look at our VTP. So the big command you really need to know, show VTP status. That's going to give you everything you need to know. So let's jump through here for a second. First thing, VTP version tells us we're running version 1. We can run version 2 if we want. Our config revision is set to zero because we haven't done anything yet. We haven't added any VLANs. We have a maximum of 1,005 VLANs. The number of VLANs we have right now is five. Those are just the default ones that come out of the box. We're running in server mode, which is the default. We haven't set our VTP domain name yet, so that's what we call null, or it's, it's not set to anything. We have not enabled VTP pruning version 2 mode is disabled because we have not enabled VTP version 2. VTP traps, that's for our SNMP traps, we have not turned those on. Our MD5 digest, that has to do with validating the VTP frames that come in and make sure that uh, they're consistent. So that is basically our MD5 hash. And then this tells us the last time our database was modified and who modified it. You'll notice it's 0000, because we don't have any IP addresses configured yet, and nobody sent out any updates. So that's a rundown of show VTP status. Now what we're going to do, let's go ahead and start configuring this. We're already in server mode, but let's say that we weren't. 
we would have to say VTP mode server. Now it's going to say we're already in server mode, but I thought I'd show you guys the command. Now what we'll do is let's set a domain name, and we're going to mismatch it on purpose between cat1 and cat2, so you can see the error. So I'm going to say VTP mode CCNA. Oops, sorry, VTP domain CCNA. There we go. So it says we changed from null to CCNA. I'm going to jump over on cat2, and we're going to say VTP show VTP status. See, we're running server mode by default. I'm going to say VTP domain CCNP, so it's mismatched. Now I'm going to say VTP mode client. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring up that trunk link here between cat1 and cat2. Since we're running DTP and the domain names are mismatched, we shouldn't see the trunk form at all. So let's go to cat1, fast024, no shut, and bring it up on cat2 as well. And we should see this fail. And right there, that's the error you're going to see. So DTP, unable to perform trunk negotiation on port 24 because of a VTP domain mismatch. So if we actually take a look here and we do a show interface trunk, you're going to notice that our trunk did not come up and we do see the error here on both sides. So let's fix that. Let's shut this down. And let's go back over to cat2. And we're going to say VTP domain CCNA. Now what you'll notice here is that it goes ahead and it changes it over. So now our domain names match. Let's bring the trunk back up. So I'm going to say no shutdown. Comes up, I'm not seeing the error. I'm going to say show interface trunk. And now my trunk did come up on cat1, over on cat2. Came up as well. So looking good. Um, except that we want cat2 to be running in transparent mode. So let's go ahead and say VTP mode transparent. Let's verify that. So show VTP status. Now cat2 is in transparent mode. Cat1 is in server mode. Let's do cat3. So we're going to say VTP mode client. We are running in client mode. You can see the domain name is not set yet. What should happen is the server should automatically update the client domain name here once we bring the link up. So let's go ahead and do that. Cat2. Let's go to port 20. Bring that up. And over on cat3 port 20. Let's bring that up. And let's see what happens here. Nothing's happened yet. Hopefully we should see this update. Make sure our trunk came up. It did. Might take a little bit to propagate the updates here. Let's look at a debug 
SWVLAN VTP events. Debug SWVLAN VTP packet. And see if we can see anything coming across. haven't seen anything yet. I went ahead and put you guys on pause for a second and I enabled the debugs on all the different switches here. I'm going to go back to cat1 for a second and we're going to shut down the link and see if we can force the VTP updates to happen here. So I'm going to shut it down. Now we're seeing the debug that the trunk went down and then we're going to bring it back up. there we see that it changed and there we go now we're sending out a summary let's see if that caught up with us over on cat3 still not seeing anything there Let's go ahead and add our VLANs here on cat1. So I'm going to say VLAN 10 name users VLAN 20. Now it's starting to send things out. Say VLAN 20 name what do we call VLAN 20 servers? and we're gonna say VLAN 30 name printers now as I'm adding the VLANs you see the debugs here it's sending out the updates so let's jump onto the other switches for a second and see if we see those now here's a perfect debug you can see switch 2 because we are the transparent mode switch we're relaying all those packets in transparent mode over on cat3 now hopefully we'll see them we do see in our debugs that we're receiving everything now let's check show VTP status and now you'll see it updated itself so remember we didn't set the VTP domain name it learned it from the server and it looks like it did go ahead and learn all the VLANs as well let's do a quick check show VLAN brief on cat3 and we do have our VLANs. So if you're not seeing things happen right away, what you can do is you can force the update by shutting and no shutting the link or adding and removing a VLAN there. So good troubleshooting there. Let's write our config. Let's do one more test by adding a VLAN on the transparent mode switch. Let's say VLAN 40 name Joe. Now that should only show up here show VLAN brief and I do see it on cat2 notice that I do not see VLAN 10, 20, and 30 because I'm a transparent mode switch but I do see the one I added back on cat3 I didn't get any more updates I don't have VLAN 40 and on cat1 I don't have VLAN 40 so our transparent mode switch completely independent of the server and the client. That's about it, guys. We're running out of time, so we're going to have to cut this off. But thank you for watching. Um, again, this is Joe Astorino. You can follow me on Twitter at Jay Astorino for updates on new videos. Until next time, guys, keep studying hard.